Before I start this video, I just want to put a disclaimer that I don't think I'm better than anybody else because I don't have social media. I'm not saying this to brag. And if social media works for you, that's great. I've seen a lot of people do amazing things. Personally, for me, it's just been really toxic, but this has just been my experience and my story, so I'm going to share it with you. Before we start, I think it'd be nice to take everybody back a little bit to the very beginning of the internet. Or at least what I remember as the beginning of the internet. What these guys expect is that they have really... <laughs> Leave Britney alone! Okay, maybe not that far, but... It was the era of beauty gurus, Tumblr girls, skater girls, grunge girls, and I wanted to be all of them. Basically, that was my introduction to the internet, and that's where my addiction sort of started. The first device that I ever got was this iPod Touch, and I tried to recover it for this video, but I couldn't, and actually that might be a good thing because there were so many cringy Tumblr girl photos I used to take. I don't think it'd be good for my mental health if I saw those right now. Obviously, things aren't the same as they used to be, and 10 years later, I'm just not the same crazed social media fan that I used to be, and I think that's okay. I got my first social media account when I was 10 years old. It was my Instagram, which in hindsight was way too young to start a social media account. When I turned 12, I got Snapchat, and a couple years later, I got Facebook. And those were the three main ones I used throughout my pre-teen and early teen years. I didn't start using Twitter seriously until I was like about 18, which was a good thing, thank God. In high school, I was the social media friend. Okay, maybe not like the social media friend, but like out of all my friends, I was probably the one that used social media the most. Every time we would go out, I would have to snap where I was, what I was eating. It got so bad to a point where whenever I used to sit down and eat anywhere with my friends, they would ask me if they could start eating yet or if they had to wait for me to get my photo first. I didn't realize how weird it was then, but looking back at it now, it was kind of a problem. I remember also one time somebody telling me, you know what, if I ever need to know where Michelle is, I can just check her story and I'd know exactly where she is. Because I would snap literally every single moment of every single day of my life. It was just really bad. I feel like it was just like a normalized addiction. I would never really feel guilty because everybody else around me was doing it. Especially when I was younger, I didn't really understand my limits and how dangerous that would have been to my self-confidence when I grew up. And although being early as I was was kind of toxic for my mental health in the later years, it was kind of crazy because I did get to witness the turn of what social media became. It first started off as this fun, genuine thing that people were using to share their lives with other people. It slowly turned into this superficial, fabricated version of what everybody's lives were. When people ask me if I miss social media, there is a part of me that does miss it, but it's more so missing what it used to be versus what it is now. It just doesn't feel the same and there's nothing that I feel like I'm really missing out on. It's been a long time coming, but I think this is the year that I finally decided to completely quit social media. And I don't mean like deactivating it, I just mean like I'm gonna quit it and I'm not gonna come back and I'm gonna see how I'm feeling for 2023. If I don't miss it, I don't miss it and I'm never gonna back. The only social media that I'm gonna keep is Facebook because that's how I call my grandma. My relationship with my socials were terrible. I would go on them every single day, especially Instagram. And I wouldn't be on Instagram to post. I would be on Instagram to stalk, lurk, and just look at pictures of people that I thought were really pretty and I wanted to look like them and it was just a really toxic cycle. Fast forward to 2021, during like mid-February, I decided to deactivate my Instagram account and I have not gone back on since then. It's almost been a year now. Previous to that, I've always like been on and off of Instagram. I deactivated for a couple months and then I come on for a couple months, but I feel like every time I reactivated again, I just felt less and less of an urge to come back. The first time I I did and I came back and I'm like wow I really missed this second time I came back it was just like whatever I feel like I didn't miss anything now I just don't even feel like reactivating it again I just don't have the energy I don't have the patience to be on there Twitter I completely deleted a couple months ago I had a mini mental breakdown because I actually did not mean to delete my Twitter account I just wanted to deactivate it but I'm actually kind of glad that it's gone it's like a burden that was lifted off of me involuntarily snapchat I barely use anymore I don't post I don't take pictures on there I barely even look at the messages on there to be honest it just gives me anxiety every time I go on. Facebook, I only use to call my grandma <laughs> and I barely like use the app at all. And today I thought it'd be cool just to share my experience being off of social media, especially as a Gen Z and especially in a time and generation where people use social media not only to uplift their image but also their careers as well. To keep it simple, I'm gonna split this video up into two parts, the pros and the cons. 
Let's start with the cons. So one of the most obvious ones is you're gonna feel out of the loop. I don't mean like in terms of people's lives because once you're off social media, you kind of realize how much you don't really care about other people's lives. But I mean more so in terms of like news, world news, trends and everything like that. If you don't care about all that, that's fine. But it's just kind of weird when your friends are talking about it and you have no idea what's going on. That was sort of like a big thing for me. But since I kind of knew what to expect when I was leaving social media, it didn't really affect me that much. My friends are pretty great, so they just fill me in if anything. And to be honest, I think it's sort of a blessing in disguise to be out of the loop because you're not really overloaded with so much information 24 seven. When I was on social media, yes, I was on top of what was going on, but also it was just too much information at once and I wasn't really focused on the right things. And some of the things that are newsworthy, looking back on it, aren't really newsworthy. So I'm okay with missing a couple things. If it's that important, I'll end up knowing by either my parents or my friends. Second, another obvious one here is it's gonna be really hard for you to build a brand and sort of expand your network. Meeting people out on the street, it's really easy to get their socials and stay connected with them through there. I feel like having social media always provides you with like a backup of people that you could reach out to, collab with, and just build your overall network. If you're an entrepreneur or you have a job that requires you to promote either yourself or your business, obviously this is gonna be a problem when you don't have social media because you just can't reach that amount of people. This is why I understand why people are on it. For me as well, yes, I would get more views if I promote myself on my socials, but in the end, that's not really my goal here. I wanna genuinely create a community where people enjoy my content because they enjoy it, not because they know me. And this leads me to my third point, which is people will think you're genuinely not interested in them. Platonically or romantically, this goes for both. It is 2022, everybody has social media. When you tell people you don't have social media, they either think you're weird or you're lying. A 21 year old girl does not have Instagram. And for the most part, people think you're lying because people use the I don't have social media excuse as a way of getting people off their backs and not sharing their handles. And I understand that. I used to do that too when I had social media, but now that I don't actually have social media, when I meet somebody, I a party or a bar and they ask me for my socials and I say that I don't have it, they just automatically think that I do not like them, I'm lying, I'm not interested in them. When that's genuinely not the case, I love being friends with people and I love meeting new people. Most times people aren't really comfortable giving out their numbers and I totally understand that. But it just puts me in this weird position now where I do want to keep in contact with these people and I do want to make friends, but I just don't think it's worth risking my sanity and mental health just for people who could potentially be or not be my friends. And number four, this is something that I don't think people talk about enough in these I quit social media videos. And this is something that I didn't expect either is that sometimes people in your life will not understand why you're quitting social media. At first, the peer pressure would get to me. People would be like, hey, I tried to tag you in this. I want to send you this, blah, blah, blah. And I get it. When you're friends with someone, you want them to be in the loop too so you can talk about things. But the reason I took a break from social media was to help my mental health and for myself to just be an overall better person. And it kind of hurt when the people in my life didn't really understand this because it was something that I was genuinely doing for myself and my well-being. And it just felt like they didn't care about any of that. At the end of the day, I'm making a decision for myself. It's not really anyone else's place to tell you what's good for you and what's not. And you know, that's not like all of my friends. I had a lot of friends that cheered me on, had a lot of friends that didn't really care, which I thought was gonna be most of them. But surprisingly, I had a lot of people that didn't really get it and didn't really support me, or they took offense to the fact that I was hopping off of social media for some odd reason. Which leads me to my last point. You're gonna lose a lot of people and you're gonna realize a lot of people are not your friends. When you're on social media, it's easy to call these people your friends because you have this connection with them, you comment on their photos, you like their posts, blah, 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 blah. You can say you're cool with these people, but it's not a real genuine connection. It doesn't mean that I don't like them or I have anything against them. It's just once my social media was gone, so were they. And although it kind of hurts to see, it was a really good eye-opener to what it meant for someone to be your actual friend, especially in this day and age where everything is so superficial and you know, you say you're best friends with somebody, but in reality, it's a very on the surface this type of connection and those aren't really the connections I want to keep around. Obviously, getting off of social media doesn't get rid of all the mental health issues, but it still has significantly improved mine. So now let's start getting into the pros. So I'm gonna start off with one of the most noticeable differences for me, and that was that I was a lot more confident in myself. As much as I don't like to admit this, growing up with social media, it kind of made me dependent on the apps to sort of give me validation and self-confidence when it came to the way I looked and the person I was. Whenever I was having a bad day, I would take a bunch of selfies, and then after I would post it on Instagram, 
Instagram and once the likes and the comments came in, everything felt better but every time I did that, I knew it wasn't gonna last. Once these likes and comments sort of died down, so did my self-confidence. And this was really dangerous for me, especially as a young girl, because I was so used to getting validation from other people, but I never really got the validation for myself. That was a time where I was sort of figuring everything out and I didn't even like me until other people liked me first. And even before I would post these photos, I would overanalyze the picture so much to a point where I was picking apart literally every single detail of my face that people wouldn't even notice. And this was especially toxic when I started to develop really bad cystic acne. I would constantly compare myself to these people with perfect skin and in the end, I would just never be satisfied with how I looked. Ever since I've been off of social media, I've lost the need for any external validation. I think taking time away from these socials has really made me less accustomed to feeling a certain way because somebody else says so. And overall, it's just made me a lot more happy and content with who I am. Number two, time. Oh my God time. The thing about social media is it's very easy to consume, but it's very hard to take that and produce your own thing. And this is a really big problem for me because not only did I use social media to boost my self-confidence, but I used it as a form of escapism. I would be constantly procrastinating on these apps, spending hours and hours using them. It was almost as if I was living vicariously through other people's socials, but never really taking the steps I need to take in order to get there. And I wasted so much time thinking instead of actually doing. Number three, you become a lot more focused. I was able to enjoy the moment a lot more. Yes, it's nice to capture the moment and have that memory, but it got to a point where I was more focused on what the memory would look like online than what it actually felt like to be in there. And being off of social media, you also realize how much other people are on it. And it's just like taking a back seat for once and observing how other people used to see me. I'm not saying I'm perfect either. I still have YouTube, obviously, and sometimes I spend a good chunk of time on there. And not only that, but I think it made me a lot more focused on the things I actually wanted to pursue in my life. I used it as something to distract me from everyday life and sort of take my mind off the things I wasn't actively doing to improve improve myself as a person and get me where I wanted to be in life. And it took me a long time to realize this, but at the end of the day, when I turned off my phone, I would just feel empty inside. And I didn't really accomplish anything that day that would have pushed me forward. Number four. Surprisingly, this made me a lot more social, especially when I went out in group settings. And I think this was because since I was off social media, I still did crave social interaction. Whenever I would go out, I would really take advantage of that opportunity to connect with people. And honestly, it's just really nice to look at people and see beyond their numbers. Because sometimes who they are online is very different from who they are in person. Over time, you sort of realize that no matter how many numbers that are, are attached to this person's name, a person is still a person and their social media presence should not change that. And finally, overall... <laughs> And finally, overall, I think I just became a lot more true to myself. You know, being online, it's really easy to be influenced by other people's thoughts. There's lots of group thinking, herd mentality. And it's so easy to be caught up in other people's opinions and not take the time to truly think about what you believe in and why you believe in that. And although I think social media has been really good at letting people express their individuality, it's also taken it away in some sense. And sometimes I think it's just nice to be away from a place where individual thinking is so condemned and looked down upon. If you're not thinking with the group you're thinking wrong and I think that's really toxic for people who want to be critical thinkers and honestly I think it should be encouraged for people to question everything that they see and overall I think I just stopped caring what other people think of me and this is something that used to rule my life at the beginning it sort of started off as an out of sight out of mind thing but slowly over time it just became something where I don't even know why I was so worried about what other people would say about me never in my life have I been so okay with who I am honestly I think that leaving social media was probably one of the best decisions I've ever made for myself. So I guess that's where I'll end it for today. Thank you so much for watching if you got this far. Hopefully you were able to gain some new insights if you're thinking about leaving social media. Hopefully this helps you with knowing what to expect. Honestly, it really was a process for me. I started off by turning off all my notifications so I could familiarize myself with not getting notifications. And I just slowly deleted them one by one. I would suggest you delete the one that you like the most first, obviously. For me, the thing that really pushed me to delete everything was my Twitter being deleted permanently. Twitter was probably my favorite social media. And after that, everything just became pretty easy. Then again, that's only if you want to delete your socials. Again, if it works for you, it works for you. I'm not here to judge, but this has just been my story and I hope you've learned something today. I hope you have a great night and I will see you soon.